Hey, it's Jacqueline here, and I'm back for another segment of explaining everything and anything real estate utilizing my toddler's toys. And today I'm gonna to talk about multiple offers. Now, because multiple offers is a fairly complicated subject, I'm actually gonna cover this one in a two-part series. The first segment today, I'm gonna to talk about multiple offers from a seller's perspective. And in part two, I will cover multiple offers from a buyer's point of view. So let's get started. So here we've got Papa Pig and Mama Pig. And Papa and Mama here live in Pigsville, and they've been hearing a lot about how it's a very strong seller's market and home prices are doing very well as of late. So they wanna take advantage of this, think it's time to finally sell the family home, perhaps downsize to something a little bit smaller. So they call their friend, local realtor, Pirate Pete. Now, despite a somewhat sketchy name and appearance, Pirate Pete is actually a really good local agent and he knows his stuff. So he meets with the pig family, he does an assessment of the home and determines based on comparable homes that have sold in the area, the value of their home is approximately $525,000. But Pirate Pete knows his stuff and he knows there's a lot of buyers out there right now looking for a home just like the pig family has. So he meets with the pig family and he suggests instead of pricing the home at 525,000, which is the market value, that he believes we should do a holding offer strategy. Now, holding offers is in real estate when we, typically speaking, will strategically underprice a property, put it on the market, hold offers, meaning that we will not view offers for a set period of time. So what typically will happen is you will list your house, for example, on a Monday, you provide a seller's direction signed by your client stating that you will not view any offers until Friday. Now, the reason we hold offers in real estate is that it allows ample time for all potential buyers to come through the home to see it. They can consult with their family, their financial advisor, and make hopefully an educated decision on putting their best foot forward with an offer. So Pirate Pete discusses this strategy with the pig family. They think it's a great idea. It's probably the best way they're going to get the most money for their asset as possible. And they say, sign us up, list the house, let's do this Pirate Pete. So Pirate Pete decides I'm going to price the house at $499. Now keep in mind, he already valued the house at $525,000. So he is intentionally undervaluing the property when he's putting it on the market at a lower price. The intention of doing so is to hopefully drum up a lot of interest in the property and see it sell not just for $525, but hopefully even more than that. So the family home goes on the market on Monday. Throughout the next five days, Tons of buyers come through the property. He knew it was gonna be a hot property, so they had over 20 showings of people that were interested in seeing the pig family home. And at the end of the day, we get to Friday and we have six buyers who register an offer. Now, what a registration of offer means is that all of these individuals have a signed offer, then they're basically saying, we're gonna throw our hat in the ring and we're going to bid on this property. So they all register their offer by 11 a.m. on Friday, as Pete has asked them all to do. Come 11 a.m., Pete then goes back to all of the buyer's representatives and he informs them, we have a total of five registered offers. This then gives all of the buyers an opportunity to improve their offer. Now keep in mind, it is blind bidding, so none of these buyers know what any of the other buyers are doing. They just have to go in with their best foot forward with the highest possible price they are comfortable and willing to pay. So offer registration deadline passes, everybody's aware there's five offers and they all submit their offers to Pete. Pete then brings all of the offers back to the family and they determine there's two that are the highest and best offers. Those guys' offers all sucked. So. Here we've got two potential buyers, and let's just say their offers came in around 575, 576. And as I mentioned, the original value of the property was about 525. The Pick family's happy with this, but they both like the buyers. The buyers have submitted personal stories, and they're really not sure, should they go with the 575 or 576? It's too close to call. So in these situations, what often will happen is Pirate Pete will go back to the agent representatives and say, it's too close to call. Keep in mind, he cannot disclose any detail of either offer and ask them to provide their best and final offer and give them an opportunity to improve. So our little lamb friend here says, you know what? That was really the best that I was really uncomfortable to do. I'm gonna stick with my offer as is. Now our knight in shining armor, he decides I really want this property. I've been looking forever. My house is already sold. I don't care what it takes, I want it. And he ups the ante and he offers them $600,000. So 
Pete takes the offers back to the clients and there's a clear winner. The knight in shiny armor gets the property. Now this is how multiple offers work and it's a common misconception out there that when you see people posting things like sold over asking, sold for 100,000 over asking, 120%, that the property sold over its value. And I think what's really important to mention is that yes, sometimes that absolutely does happen, but when we're listing properties with the intention of holding offers to create a bidding war, what we're doing is utilizing in terms of a strategy to underprice the property. The house was listed at 499. We know it was never worth 499, but by doing so, they created enough of a frenzy to market demand to get a very high premium price for the property. And that, my friends, is multiple offers from our pig's friends perspective.